Well, that was a load of trousers, mate, wasn't it? It was, but I mean, we knew this could happen. I think we'd better cut in and run him. We've got two more pounds, that's 68. I think now we should head down the middle seven because it's fish in there and we've got a good chance of getting some barbel. We'll probably use up 30 odd miles to get in there, but hopefully we'll get into the barbel once we arrive. Planning ahead, of course. We've allowed for this, haven't we? Yeah. Do you think we're doing okay? I think we're pretty well on track, really. Well, here we are. This is Hampton Load on the Middle River 7. As you can see, the river looks lovely. The weather's great for barbel fishing. It's slightly overcast. The situation is that we've come down from Montford Bridge. We've used up 32 miles in getting here, and we've got 36 and a half pounds left in our notional keep net. And the next two days fishing here on the Severn for barbel and tomorrow at a commercial fishery are going to be absolutely critical for us because we know we've got another slightly lean patch to cope with coming up so we've got to catch fish. Now the other thing is we've got 10 days left to complete this challenge. We're in the West Midlands now and we've got to get to low stoffed within the 10 day period so we're not out of the woods yet. Anyway, hopefully it'll all go well. Yeah, well this venue is not new to me because like Matt, I used to live in the Midlands and fish here. And it was easy fishing in those days. As long as you put a bed of hemp down, you could fish anything over it and get a bite. But the barbel eventually wised up until Matt came up with this new way of catching. And it's been very effective. Everybody's using it. And I'm going to be using it today too. Well, it better be good because let me tell you, we're fishing a day ticket stretch of the river. It's controlled by the Kimber Freeliners Angling Club. Anyone can fish here, you just turn up and buy a ticket on the bank. And we've paid the price for not getting here early enough because the swims we wanted to fish are occupied. So this method had better be good. So this is the first time you've used this method then, Mick? It is, yeah. And uh, I've heard so much about it. I mean, this is the standard method now. Yes, I mean, I first came up with it about three or four years ago. I was fishing with pellets at the time, catching a lot of fish. But all I was doing was catapulting pellets into the swim or using PVA bags. And I just got hacked off with the cost of it. So I thought, well, an open-ended feeder would do it. Then I looked round for a ground bait and came up with this pellet ground bait because it's pure crushed down pellet and it worked like a dream. The pellet ground bait explodes from the feeder. It sends a scent trail downstream, which pulls the fish up to the feeder. Then they find the pellets. And basically, I christened it the time bomb because it was only a, you know, a question of time before the rod tip would go over. It's not quite as good as it used to be, but now everybody's doing it. So it's starting to taper off, but it's still very, very good. So they're definitely coming to the feeder, aren't they? Oh, yeah. I've had one line by. Yeah, mate. Come on. Oh. There you go, Sir Michael. I didn't think that was on for a minute. Well, the method certainly works. That bait's been out there no more than 10 minutes, and I had a right whack on the rod tip then, and I'm playing a barbel. And I haven't had a barbel down the seven for many a year, so I'm really, really enjoying this. It feels like I'm actually snagged up, but with barbel, they'll just hold in the current and it's just a solid pounding pressure. Did you notice you get a series of line bites first? Yeah. Taps and knocks, and some of them are quite violent bangs on the rod tip, but yeah. you just have to leave that and wait for the rod to go. Don't they fight? Yeah, fantastic, isn't it? I mean, this is only a small one. The, the barbel in this section go to about 10 or 11 pounds. There you go, Mick. Oh, lovely job. Your first one on the page. Hey. Well, thanks for that, Matt. I think we've really proved here that your method works because these barbel are fished for day after day after day. They know all the tricks in the book, but this one, it's fell for it straight away. And if you look closely, you can actually see the pellet still on the hook on a hair rig. I'm not even going to weigh this. I think I'm going to call it a four pounder and I don't think I'm far out. The barbel should be put in the river, put back straight away as soon as you've caught them. OK, Matt, should we let that one go? Yep. Well, I'm just going to push him out here now, Mick. Just let him ride himself in the landing net till he recovers his position like that. And you've done the right thing, Mick. You've put him back fairly quickly, so he's in good condition. If I just lower the front of the net now, he'll swim away, and there he goes. Well done, sir. 
There was a tap. There's a bite back. Actually, this feels more like a chub than a barbel. Oh, he's out. He's through the weed there. Well, the chub loves the method as well, you know. They will take the bait. There he is, Mick. A bit festooned in weed, but points on the board. Look at the size of the fish's mouth. It's only about a pound and a half, but you could literally get a golf ball down there. Out goes another time bomb. Oh, it is a chub. Well, that was a good bite for a chub. They all count towards our weight. That's two pound onto the tally. That takes us up to 14 pounds now. Well, here's how you fill the feeder up. You start off by creating a plug at the bottom of the feeder, then take some of these pellets, put a small handful into the feeder, and then take another handful of ground bait and just cap off so that what you end up with is a pellet sandwich. Now, what happens when the water hits this is it attacks the ground bait, ground bait drifts downstream, that creates a scent trail, that pulls the fish upstream, and they come to get these inside the feeder. For a hook bait, you want 14 mil pellets and you need a little bait drill like this. So the idea is to drill through the pellet. What you then do is take a needle and push it through the hole that you've created and that enables you then to take your hair rig and transfer the bait from the needle onto the hair, put in a stop and there's your rig. <laughs> I've long suspected that all the fish in the river are eating these pellets and there's your proof. I've got a six ounce dace there. Well, just to prove that it wasn't a fluke, there's another one. For a dace, that's a lovely fish. It's about eight ounces, I'd say, half a pound. Oh, that's a proper bite. Whoa! Now, that was a proper rod wrench. <laughs> I don't think this one's a dace.